Hello, my name is Shan George. I am an actor, a Nigerian, half Nigerian, half British. My mother is from Cross River States. My dad is British, um, a bona fide member of Nollywood. <laughs> I also produce sometimes, and I'm sitting here. This seat that I am sitting, I'm so excited and opportune to be in this very wonderful program, Sound Plus, on Silverbed Television, Abuja. Sound Plus. Sometime in 1996, I gained admission into the University of Lagos. I didn't have money to pay my fees. I didn't even know how to start. I had written the exams and I had passed and I had got the admission letter. And I was looking at my letter like this and I was thinking, how am I going to get the school fees to pay now for this school that I want to start? So in the process of trying to get a job so that I can raise money for my fees, I met a lady called Blessing. At that time, she was Blessing Iremi, although now she's Mrs. Oh, Pastor Mrs. Blessing Stevens. She used to play Wanga in the NTA Rested Soap. Then, then she took me to Emeka Osai, and the late Jennifer O'Kerry, may her soul rest in peace. They were going to do a movie titled Tons of Rose. And so, Blessing took me to the audition, and the uh, I passed the audition, I got the role uh, that was paid 20,000 Naira, that was in 1996. That was my first opportunity at acting. I didn't even plan it, I didn't even dream it, I didn't even wonder it, I didn't even know about it, I didn't even, I didn't even know how it happened. I just want to, you know, let's just say God took me there and that's how I got the money to start school and that's how I entered Nollywood, that's how I started and that's how I've been till now. Even though when I was in the university I read mass communication. I finished and I just, you know, I had started with Nollywood, so I had ended in Nollywood. So that's how I am still in Nollywood. Um, yes, I mean, years ago, we didn't have cinemas. Although we had all those people who used to carry projectors and the, you know, screens around to schools, uh, campuses, and, you know, some um, cities and some halls to show some of those movies. But then it was a matter of, you know, like, a, the, let's say, mobile cinemas. Now we have, we have cinemas like Siva Bed and them other cinemas. And uh, to me, it's, it's, a v, it's a very big step in the industry. It's a very giant step. It's a, a good, um, positive progress in the industry that we have cinema. In fact, I just um, pray that the um, insecurity in the country does not, you know, affect it that much to the point where cinemas won't be able to be making money because these cinemas are very expensive to maintain all the, um, uh, the kind of equipment they use, the kind of equipment they need for them to be, you know, running these cinemas is, is quite expensive, is quite um, heavy and it's it's not going to be a good thing if after all that investment, people are not able to come out and go to cinema. I mean, to begin with, we don't really have a cinema culture in Nigeria. And then the insecurity is like, you know, slowing it down. Actually, when I was a kid back home in my village, we used to be told folk tale stories by, you know, our grandma, grandpa, under the moonlight, under the tree, 
uh, every evening, most times, I come from a, a small community called Ediba in Abi local government area of Cross River State. We are uh, farmers and uh, fishermen because we live by river bank. And uh, every evening when we are all back from the farm, we're, you know, gathered together, having dinner, and we've been told stories. And these um, uh, folk tales, they used to have songs that go with those folk tales. And so sometime, uh, uh, some years ago, I went back to my village and, and I tried to do the same thing. I tried to gather kids and I was telling them those folk tales, some of those folk tales that I could remember. And I discovered that none of them even knew any of the songs. So it really, really like, it broke my heart. I, I decided I had to do something about it. That's how I got into the studio. I had to write some other lyrics to join with the, because these folk songs, they come just only the choruses. They didn't have like verses. And because I needed to record them as proper songs in the studio and put them on CD, I had to do verses and add to it. So that's how singing actually started. I never really did, um, uh, sell any of my songs like you know I didn't go commercial I didn't sing English per se I just did um, my own native folk songs in my native dialect and uh, burned them in thousands of CDs and went home that December and shared it among my home people and I'm very proud to say right now a lot of kids from my village till tomorrow are still singing some of those folk you know folk songs and it makes me really proud Hey, <laughs> <laughs>